A little numbness, tingling, pain in the wrist and hand. It could be carpal tunnel. The syndrome is very common. Yeah, we are excited to hear about this. A new approach to surgery using cameras, thin tools, and a tiny incision. And it makes a real difference for patients. Yeah, it really is. Dr. Gavin Omahoney is part of the team at Miller Orthopedic Specialists. Mm -hmm. Good to see you, Doctor. Thanks <laughs> Good for morning. By. It's great to meet you. Doctor, let's start with you a little bit. Um, you're new to the Omaha area. Mm -hmm. That's so, right. Uh, and you're, you've been in the United States for a while, but you're mm -hmm. from Dublin. That's right. I'm, I'm Irish. That's, that, that's why I sound this way. <laughs> yes. That's why you have the Omahoney name. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's almost Omaha. So I see it's it in the corner of my <laughs> eyes, and it, it makes me sort of double take for a second. I, I like yes. that. But you are board certified. You are fellowship trained. When you, you're a specialist. That's right. So what, what, do you, what do you treat most, I guess? Okay, so I'm, I'm a hand surgeon. As a hand surgeon, I take care of all conditions related to the forearm, wrist, and hand. So that's um, acute traumas, fractures, ligament injuries, um, also chronic wear and tear issues like arthritis or tendonitis. So mm -hmm. basically anything to do with the hand, adults, kids, infants with congenital uh, differences, I'll treat. Would you consider carpal tunnel a wear and tear issue, I guess? Because it seems like uh, older people tend to get carpal tunnel mm -hmm. syndrome, doesn't it? Um, it? It's very unusual in children, and if kids have it, there's usually an underlying reason for it. It tends to occur in the late 20s, 30s, and older, yes. What is mm -hmm. it? So what carpal tunnel is, is it's the most common compression syndrome affecting the nerves in the hand. It affects the median nerve. Uh -huh. There's a picture there that shows the space through which the nerve travels from the forearm to the hand. And it's actually a tunnel. So you can see there are bones on three sides. And over the top of that, there's a thick ligament that can't stretch. So anything that causes any sort of swelling or increased volume in that tunnel mm -hmm. puts increased pressure on the tunnel and the softest structure will get squeezed and that softest structure is the nerve. So the nerve has a lot of little blood vessels mm -hmm. in and on it and when those get pinched off the nerve starves of oxygen and it malfunctions. So it's a little bit like if you sit in the wrong position for uh, too long and mm -hmm. your leg falls asleep. Uh -huh. The same thing is happening. And people with carpal tunnel have that kind of unpleasant tingling, pins mm -hmm. and needles yeah. all the all time. All the time. They can't just walk it off and get blood flowing through that area and move on. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. My mom had it and, and it was very painful for her. Um, but what we're talking about here wasn't available <laughs> to this this new technology is really cool what are you able to do now using cameras okay so before we would do any kind of surgery we would try and treat carpal tunnel non-operatively mm -hmm. if that doesn't work then um, surgery is available to basically open that ligament and release the pressure so the traditional way to do it was to make a big incision in the palm mm -hmm. to dissect down to that ligament and to open it up. And a newer technique, which has been around for a while, but it's, it is newer, um, is to make a small incision right here before the wrist mm -hmm. and to pass a little fiber optic tube with a camera attached and into the, the tunnel. So you're not slicing the whole hand open, and this is uh, what we're seeing. Yeah. Uh, well, what are we seeing on the left versus the right? So on the right, you see the ligament um, from inside. So you'll see those little sort of lines across in that white structure up above. That's the ligament. And on the left, you see it after it's been opened. So there is no longer wow. any sure, ligament sure. there. Wow. And, but the, the incision is? The incision is less than a centimeter, and it's oh located there. Less than a centimeter. So when we talk about the impact for patients here, what's yes. the, in, in terms of the outcome, the recovery, what is the difference? Okay, so at about a year, both open surgery and endoscopic surgery are excellent at treating carpal tunnel. The symptoms should be uh, resolved. Mm -hmm. The difference is immediately after surgery. Um, open and that's surgery, immediately after right here? Yeah, there's just uh, one or sometimes two little incisions on the hand. And what's important that you can see there is that this area here between those two incisions is clear of any kind of incision or injury. And that's the most painful place to have an incision. Mm -hmm. So if you have open surgery, you may still have about a one and a half centimeter incision, but it's in the wrong place. It's exactly where 
you grasp objects with, it interferes with sport um, and just daily yeah. activities. Yeah, well, if I'm getting carpal tunnel surgery, I'm, I'm looking at the endoscopic. I'm saying that's what I want, but right. I imagine not everyone is a candidate for that. How do you get to be a candidate for that type of surgery? Okay, so there are some cases in which you'll want to do an open surgery, a recurrent carpal tunnel, or in the case of someone who's got a systemic inflammatory disorder like uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Mm -hmm. But apart from that, pretty much anyone who's eligible for an open carpal tunnel release would be eligible for the endoscopic version. They would get back to work and back to sport quicker mm -hmm. and with less pain. As, as many benefits as there are here with any surgery, there are risks. What's the case with this? Okay, so with any uh, release, open or endoscopic, mm -hmm. there's a small risk of infection, it's less than 1%, and there's a small risk of damage to neighboring structures. Mm -hmm. But with the endoscopic release, the risks are no higher, they're exactly the same as with the open, so you have mm -hmm. advantages without increased risks. We may have viewers out there right now that have had this tingling sensation in their wrists or had some of these symptoms for carpal tunnel and they may be good candidates. Is this the best way to get a hold of you is to call the uh, Miller Orthopedic Specialist offices? That's uh, right. Because you have two of them. You got the Omaha Clinic and you mm -hmm. got the, the one in Council Bluffs as well. Mm -hmm. We do. So I have a clinic in both of those locations. I also go out to Clorinda as well. And so anyone can call either of those numbers mm -hmm. or go to our website. And if you go to my page on the website, you can book an appointment to see me directly through the, uh, the internet. That's yeah, awesome. Those advances in the endoscopic surgeries is just incredible. It I is. I think the takeaway is you don't have to live with the pain. Just get the diagnosis. You hear how simple it is. It's easier it's now, yeah. It's starting with that appointment. Doctor, it's nice to meet you. Thank you. Welcome to Omaha. Thank, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank it's, you. Great. it's great to be here. Well, yeah. Mike over here. I don't know if you saw. <laughs> <laughs>